Moving on in the 2021 season previews, we have the Calgary Flames. Now, this is interesting. The Flames, are they there or are they not there? That's the big question. Because, you know, we see all these good offseason acquisitions, and then we just see, and then there's just still a lot of voids open. There's still a lot of questions to be asked. There's still a lot of things to go down. And there's still the possibility of Johnny Gaudreau or Sean Monahan being traded away. So let's get into what can happen for the Calgary Flames 2021 season and what likely will happen from my perspective. First off, if you are new to the channel, please go make sure and subscribe also. Welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, trying to get to 600 subscribers by the end of the year. Currently, at the time of recording this video, we are 14 subscribers away. And I mean, it would be mind-blowing if we can make it there by Christmas, which is 10 days away. So you now, um, trying to make money off of this someday, maybe get, get to 1,000. That's kind of a kid's dream. But you know, one subscriber could really help me out with that. Also, please go check out the links in the description below, which includes Twitter, Instagram, Discord, and TikTok. Yeah, I do TikTok. So, you know, I got all those social medias to promote this one. If you want to go throw me a DM on any of those, and you know, I can talk to you, have a hockey conversation, feel free to do that as well. And yeah, let's get into the off-season and basically last-season recap of the Calgary Flames. So, let's recap last season. So, last season was a pretty good season for the Calgary Flames. 70 games played, 36 wins, 27 losses, and 7 overtimes for 79 points. Not too bad. Um, in a shortened season, at least. Um, 19th in the NHL. They beat the Winnipeg Jets in the playing round, which, you know, Jets fans, you could argue that that was unfair. That shouldn't have happened because, you know, you, you line in, Shifley got injured, and that, that, that led to the big problem. So, you know, you, Winnipeg Jets fans, you can really get mad at that for the reason why you guys lost. But then they lost to the eventual... Western Conference champions, Dallas Stars. I was the Stanley Cup champions. Stars fan would have, Stars fan would have probably like unsubscribed. Um, they lost to Dallas Stars in the play in, ra in round one in six games. Um, a very painful series for Calgary. They were up 2 nothing, And then Dallas just came through and just sprinted. Sprinted and won all four straight in a row. And basically just knocked Calgary out of the park after that. So it was really disappointing for the Calgary Flames. You know, Calgary, you know, they got upset in 2019. They didn't make it in 2018. It's really been just like a middle of the road. This team needs a. This team is looking for a playoff run. Um, it's one. He's. It's one of those teams where I'm thinking, you know what? This team's bound to go on a play a playoff run because they're a team that has the good enough assets, the good enough numbers to do it. The key departures for this team, and let me tell you, there was quite a bit of them. Um, there are some people who will not really look effective, but there's some people who will. Um, Cam Talbot's one of them. Um, Cam Talbot is was the backup goaltender for most of this season. They're not really gonna miss him. He's off to Minnesota. TJ Brody is off of the team, off to Toronto. That's going to be a big puncture in the defense. Could hurt the, could hurt the locker room in some way. you got Eric Gustafson, who went to Philadelphia through free agency. Gustafson was a rental um, when you look at him now. And then Travis Hamannick, who opted out of the playoffs, and they just didn't re-sign him back. So, you know, some big guys there. I think TJ Brody's the one that's going to hurt the most. Really, in all honesty, the other, the other people were okay. Um, I mean... Yeah, they have they have their goaltender situation solidified now, even with Cam Talbot gone. So, I mean, this team, although they did lose a big defenseman in TJ Brody, they're still looking pretty good, and especially with the key arrivals they got as well. The key arrivals, there's quite a bit of them. So the first one, Jacob Markstrom, uh, goaltender, big, big. This is a big one. Um, Markstrom was a very good goaltender in Vancouver. He really he really backs up those Vancouver Canucks to the second round. I mean, Demko backs up them to a game seven, but. Marshall backs up them to the second round. So, you know, this team is looking looking unbelievable right now with Jacob Marshall acquired. And also with this too, Chris Tanev. Chris Tanev um, will replace, will definitely replace TJ Brody in some aspects on that defensive blue line. Um, that's going to help out the Calgary Flames a lot with their defense, especially with the guys that they added so far with the defense as well. Uh, they also got Louis Domingue, who is probably going to be that third goaltender, and maybe the guy that goes to Seattle, in all honesty. Uh, Joaquin Nordstrom from the Boston Bruins, a very good third-line um, offensive player. Uh, Dominic Simone, I really have a lot of faith in Dominic Simone. And if he doesn't get injured for a little bit of his prime, uh, Josh Levo. Josh Levo in Vancouver, and as always, we call him the Calgary Canucks because, you know, they took like half of Vancouver's team. Uh, Levo was injured for a lot of the Canucks' um, tenure with them. So it, it's reasonable that they let him go, just give him a chance with another team. And we're going to see how Levo is affected with the Calgary Flames this season. And now for the moment we've all been waiting for, let's get into the offensive projected lineup. This is a very interesting. you got a lot of good players on this team. 
And this team, looking at this already, it looks very, very stacked. So, starting off on the left wing side, you have Johnny Gaudreau. We'll get into him later. Andre Mangapair, I probably said Mangapang, however you want to say it. Uh, Milan Lucic and Joaquin Nordstrom as your top four. And then I have Zach Ronaldo and Kirkland as your deaf players. Now, Johnny Gaudreau is in trade rumors, and he will stay in trade rumors. For the rest of my life. Um, Goudreau has had rumors of going to Philadelphia. Which looking at it wouldn't really work. He's had rumors of going to Montreal. Which looking at it probably could work. Depending on who Montreal throws at them. Uh, I've heard rumors of Johnny Goudreau going to Winnipeg. For Patrick Laine. That won't work out. Because the Jets won't trade Goudreau for Laine. I mean it's a, it would seem like a decent deal. But nah. And um, you know a lot of other deals wouldn't work. So I think, I think Johnny Goudreau. Is likely to stay in Calgary. I mean, they, the GM has hinted at it that he's that he's going to keep him in Calgary. But then there's the other trade rumors out there as well. It's just really just a big, a big mess when it comes to Goodrow. Um, on the center core, you have Sean Monahan as that first player. We'll come to him in a second. Uh, Michael Backlund is your second center. You have um, Derek Ryan, and then you have Sam Bennett, and then you have Emilia Pettersson, Peltier, uh, Philip Zago. Zwago Tony, I probably butchered that really wrong there. I can't even read it from the spreadsheet. Uh, Phillips again, and then you have Free Froze. Freese, Froze, however you want to say it, as your deaf guys. So, Sean Monahan has also been in trading rooms for a bit too. They've rumored about trading him as well. I don't see that happening either. I haven't heard much rumors on him. I've heard more rumors on Goudreau than I've heard Monahan. So, that's more or less likely. Goudreau is more likely to get traded than Sean Monahan is. And I wouldn't even expect either of them to get traded. They're very good offensive players. I mean, they're disappointed with how... I would be disappointed with how Johnny Gaudreau um, played this season compared to his 99-point season in 2018-19. But I think he would definitely bounce back as um, a very solid Calgary Flame. And same with Sean Monahan. Um, on the right-wing side of things, you have Matthew Kachuk on that first line. Um, no surprise there. Um, Lindholm, Josh Levo on that third line, if everything goes right. And Dylan Dubé. Then you have Dominic Simone as your fill-in guy. And then Tuola, Ruzicka... Robinson and Godden as your deaf players. So, you know, Matthew Kachuk, very solid first liner, can put up the points. Hard hitter, great great goal scorer. He's kind of a, like, all-around good player. Uh, Lindholm, another good solid second line player. Josh Levo, if he doesn't get injured, he will play pretty well on that set, on that third line. And then Dylan Dubé, who is pretty good as well. And then I could even see Dominic Simone maybe pushing for that fourth line spot if Dylan Dubé does not live up to the hype. On the defensive side of things now, you know, pretty stacked defense when you look at this. Uh, left defenseman, we're going to start off with that, by the way, because I have him sorted by left D and right D. I have Margie Ordano as that first defenseman, no surprise there. Noah Hannafin as the second one, and Valamaki as the third guy. But I think Nikita Nestorov will put it, will throw in there as well. Kylington will definitely make his mark also. Um, Lurby, Mickey, and Pullman will be those deaf players as well. So... I think that left side of defense, I could see all th all five of those guys, besides um, the, the bottom three, make it into the top three, at least for a little bit at some point in the coming in the coming season. Um, Kylington's very good. Nesterov has been playing pretty well in the KHL. Uh, Valamaki showed he can play good. Noah Hannafin, great second line, second pairing defender. I keep saying second line. Second pairing defender. And Giordano, the captain. Very big veteran. I mean, he has high salary cap. So he's exposed on NHL 21 a lot, but he's still a great defenseman. On the right defensive side, you have um, Chris Tanev as that first defenseman. I have Anderson then, and then I have um, Yellison. I probably said that really wrong. And then I have Kinval and Petrovic as those fill-in slash deaf players. So, you know, apologies if I don't say their names right. I can't read the sheet, so I can't. Ex I can't. I can't really read the sheet very well, so I can't exactly tell their names entirely very well. So, um, you know, apologies for that. Um, so, you know, that right D side is very good. Um, Tanev is there. Anderson could push for the next defensive spot, but um, I'm not exactly sure there. It's very interesting when it comes to the, the right defense in Calgary, but I think that left defense definitely is going to stay solid for a lot of that season. And last but not least on the lineup, you have the goaltender. So, this goaltending thing looks really, 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 really good. I would be very excited. Uh, Jacob Marks will be your starting goaltender. David Riddick is your next guy there, too. Uh, Louis Domingue is your third person. And you have Tyler Parsons, uh, Zach Wolf, and Zagulin. I probably said that really wrong. As your as your other three goaltenders. So, And I have a lot of faith in Parsons and Wolf, too. They play pretty well in their prospect leagues. So I would be pretty excited about those guys, too. 
you know, Deming, Deming's a very solid third goaltender, bouncing around the league a lot. Fringe starter, in all honesty. Um, then you have David Reddick as the backup. Um, David Reddick, I think, needs somewhat of a bounce back season. He still played pretty well. But you look at his save percentage, his save percentage was not that good. So, you know, he does need a bit of a bounce back. And then there's Jacob Markstrom, and he's Jacob Markstrom. So, that, so you know, that was a great addition for the Calgary Flames there as well. And really, in all honesty, I look at the rest of this team. This team is stacked for a run, but just some stuff has, like, a lot of stuff to be desired about, like that defense. The right side of the defense looks great, but there's just a lot of things that are, a lot of questions going on with that. So, it's a, it looks like a great team right now. I think they're bound for a playoff run, but there's still just a lot of questions left. And finally, the moment you have all been waiting for, the playoff prediction. Will the Calgary Flames make the 2021 Stanley Cup playoffs? Yes, I think they will. Um, it's going to be tight, especially with the division that they're playing in the Canadian division. Uh, they're the first Canadian team to review, by the way. I'm almost said I'm specific, like I'm an idiot. But yeah, they're playing in the Canadian division. So it's going to be interesting how they're going to do this. Um, I think Calgary will finish up towards the top. But really, in all honesty, all, all six, six out of seven Canadian teams could really just push. Uh, I think Ottawa is the only one that really won't be able, won't really do much. So Calgary... They need to get a good start off their hands, and you can see them maybe even going with like a 20-10 and 10 record, even though that sounds really unrealistic. With like a division like the Canadian division, you could see team, you could see a team like that going insanely competitive like that. And, you know, you're going to have close records. There's going to be one team in the entire Canadian division that's blowing out, that's blowing away with everyone, and um, everyone, and then the second place team, and the third place team, and the fourth place team, and so on and so forth will have around the same record. So, Calgary, if they want to win this Canadian division... They're really going to need to get a good start. Um, and really, honestly, they don't want to. They they don't want to start off losing like five out of six, or like nine out of ten, or eight out of eight out of nine. You don't want to lose. You don't want to lose right away like that. Because in a Canadian division like that, we haven't even had this ex experience before. But it's going to be very hard to come out of. Let me know your thoughts, comments below. Thank you all for watching. If you did enjoy, please go make sure to like, hit the subscribe button as we are trying to get six hundred subscribers by the end of the year. Next up is the Carolina Hurricanes.